be showing you how to use the storybird.com website and when you reach the home page of storybird.com I just went to sign up for free when you get to this page it'll allow you to go in and customize whether you're an educator, or teacher, regular user, or a student as teachers we can go in and create a teacher account so what I did was I went and signed in I linked it to my Google account and it automatically pulls up my profile so when you get to the home screen it shows you the studio writing and reading it has your stuff which is a book that I started to play with and then published it's not available yet because it has to go through review if I'm following any different artists or writers or friends I can see what books they are publishing and putting on. This is great for students in your classroom because as they begin to publish different pieces of work, other students can go in and follow it, comment, and review what their friends have been writing. I have my own bookshelf that I went in. Now when I set up my account, I set it up as a teacher for students who are aged 8 to 12. So I went through and I browsed in the read section which brought up multiple books and so from them I just clicked on a few that I thought looked good left out so I can read it on the right sidebar it has this area that has removed from bookshelf if I click remove from bookshelf it takes it away if I click add to bookshelf it just goes into my bookshelf so I can pull it in again I wanted to put this one into my bookshelf to just point out some of the capabilities of this program Students are able to go in, pick a piece of artwork, write their story, add additional art to it if they would like, and let the story continue to unfold. And again, you can see down here that students and participants on the website are able to comment. You can tweet it as well as sharing. So if you have a class Twitter account or a Facebook page, you can share it there. You can also do an email link, share it to email. Uh, sorry, you can do a web page link to email to be able to share with parents as well. So there's a lot of opportunities for parents to be able to see what's going on in the classroom. There's something that I noticed on this is that because they only review for content to make sure that it's age appropriate for the students that you're writing for or for the audience there's no editing so there can be uh, grammatical errors as well as uh, punctuation and spelling errors in the writing that occurs so if you have students go on just be aware that there are going to be issues that pop up I know I saw a couple of them in this this story here as well as the other one so if I go back into me, my bookshelf, there's a couple others that I put. I thought the synonym book looked good. This one was going to be broken down into individual chapters, A through Z, with different synonyms for each one. It's just in the works. She hasn't gotten very far on it. Now, you can also go in and you can edit your profile, so if you want to upgrade to different levels so I can upgrade to pro but I'm not going to I can also manage my password if I want an avatar to show up I can have one my email address but I can also put in my age range so I know that I'm an adult but I want to be reading content for 8 to 12 so that's what I put in as my my age range for this one I can also change email notifications so if somebody comments on my stuff or mentions me somebody hearts my work I can get notification if I want to order a book or if somebody orders a book that I've written it would go in here and then download so how often um, I've been able to download a book that I've written so in let's go into creating a book so when you get to the right section this is where it's a little bit time-consuming for students so the pre-write stage is really important because there's a lot of different artwork and if a kid doesn't already have that brainstorming piece down they can spend this entire time just browsing through the artwork looking at what's available and wondering how to get hooked so let's say I want to write a story about Central Park 
Well, if I go in and I choose to necessarily use this art, I might decide, you know what, I don't necessarily like this art, but maybe I like this artist. So I can go through and I can also browse the different art that a particular artist has. Oh, let's say I want to write a story about mm, fall harvest pumpkin pie. So I'm going to use this art and I can also go in and decide do I want to write a poem, picture book, long form, multi-chapter. I tend to be a picture book fan. And then this is where it gets real simple. So I already have the art there and if I choose to do a different one I just drag it over, decide where I want it to go, and then I can type my text there. So the day, the people of the pool fell from the sky. Let's know. Yep, and I've hit my word limit for this page, so that's also a little bit frustrating. So beware when you're working with students that you have to be cautious because each page is a little bit different. So the day the people of the pool fell from the sky was no ordinary day. And then I'll just go down here and click add another page. And since now I've decided it's a fantasy story about falling from the pool, I'll just keep going and I can just keep typing a story, adding multiple pages. So again, if you haven't already done that brainstorming, that pre-write process, it can be difficult for students because there are so many options and then browsing through can just become a real distractor. And then after I can put on a cover and we'll call it um, falling from the high dive. Save it. Now I can go into save and close, publish it, invite collaborator. I'm not going to go ahead and publish it simply because it is what it is and I'm just modeling it really quick. So I'm going to go ahead and save and close. However, if I choose to invite a collaborator, I can invite someone from the class list that I've already created as a teacher, or I can email them to have them come and join to work on the story with me. So this is another nice extension for working across different mediums to have students working with some of those 21st century new literacies of online collaboration. So within my own writing. I have my, let's see, my stories that I saved. I can also browse poetries and different blogs, but where did my, my story go? All right, so the one that I published was The Adventures of PB&J, and I got inspired by a piece of art as I was looking through the website. And so I just wrote a quick little story with some of the pictures available from the Dreamy Giraffe about PB&J. A young girl with a wild imagination who saves crime with her sidekick, Jay. Now I can choose to buy my book. And this is where I can download it as a PDF, soft cover or hard cover. Now I thought the price point wasn't really bad for what the capabilities were. However, when you think about some of the other websites that we've seen uh, published, such as Ublisher, where you can just download it at no cost, you know, parents might not necessarily want to pay to have multiple downloads, etc. So, but it is available for a PDF download if you want to have that option for your parents. So, these are just some of the different pieces of the storybird.com website. I think it's very creative. I think it has a lot of potential and imagination for students, especially with creative writing. However, 
I can see students getting lost in this website and getting distracted, especially if they haven't taken that time to focus and look at what they need to do for that writing process.